bought 75 $5 gift cards so the police officers could get coffee or lunch. It would be really cool to meet you. I wish I could vote for you, but I'm only 11. But my mom voted for you. I'm starting a fundraiser called A Break for the Blue. I listened to your talks and I went to the inauguration and saw you. You're awesome. Sincerely, Samuel. Thankfully, I had the honor of meeting Samuel earlier today. He was uh, adopted by his family in Guatemala. He's incredibly grateful to be an American, and uh, he's very grateful to all of the law enforcement officers around the country. The president is very proud of Samuel and believes our country needs more young people like him who give back to their communities. Uh, and he's a, a really, really great kid, and it was great to meet him. And with that, I will take your questions. Sarah. John. Sarah, we, we haven't had a chance to, to hear uh, any kind of an in-depth analysis here. Where are we with the summit with Kim Jong-un and the statements that we've heard over the last few days out of North Korea? Uh, do, these, do you think that these throw in jeopardy the idea of a summit? Or, or is this just North Korea doing what it does and trying to get the best deal possible? Look, the president is uh, prepared and will be ready to meet, and we're continuing to move forward with the preparations at this point. And if the North Koreans want to meet, we'll be there. And uh, at this point, there is not a lot of change beyond that, uh, and certainly not in, in our process. So what North Korea is saying now about the joint military exercises after Moon Jae-in said Kim knows that these take place and he understands that they have to take place. What game is North Korea playing? Uh, you'd have to ask North Korea what game they're playing. I can tell you what we're doing, uh, and we're continuing to move forward in preparations. And the president, as we've said all along will be prepared and ready to meet, and um, there's really not a lot to add beyond that point. John? Thanks a lot, Sarah. What leverage does the U.S. have as it relates to having this meeting take place on June the 12th, and to that meeting actually taking place when it takes place, if it takes place, what leverage does the U.S. have over accomplishing the American goal of denuclearizing the Korean Peninsula? Uh, we're continuing in the maximum pressure campaign, uh, but again, nothing has changed on our end. This was an invitation that North Korea offered and that we've accepted, and we're continuing to move forward in those preparations. Steve? Another issue. I'm Sorry, I'm going to keep going because we're really tight on time just, today. Uh, Steve, follow go ahead. up on that, uh, what the North Koreans also announced was they were stopping the dialogue with South Korea. So is it possible that there could be a meeting between the United States and North Korea if that whole dialogue between the North and South is on ice. Uh, the meeting that would take place on June 12th is is between the United States and North Korea, should it take place. We're going to meet uh, with President Moon next week. And beyond that, again, there are no changes at this point to our schedule uh, or anything else. Blake? Yeah. Does President Trump believe that the FBI had a spy at one point inside his campaign? Uh, I haven't spoken with him directly about that, but certainly seen the reports, and if there is any truth to that, it should certainly be looked into. Emerald, sorry, I'm going to keep going just because we're tight. Emerald, go ahead. Thank you. Following up on Blake's question, if it is proven without a shadow of a doubt that there was a spy planted in the Trump campaign, does that change the president's position on firing Robert Mueller? I'm not going to speak about hypotheticals or get into uh, a what could happen if. Uh, we'll move forward in the process and make a determination at that point. John? Thank you, Sarah. Um, the Iraqi elections are over, and it's very clear that the two big winners, the two top vote getters, were the party that was linked to Maktara el Sadr, uh, a sworn enemy of the United States and someone aligned with the Iraqi Communist Party. And the second place finisher was the party aligned with Mr. Al Hamri, a warlord who was once backed by Iran. What's the U.S.'s attitude on a government in Baghdad uh, having either of those individuals as the key player? I'll start with the fact I'm glad you said the names and not me, because I probably wouldn't have gotten them right. Uh, but in terms of our policy, we don't have any new policy announcements uh, with a potential change there. Jeff? No, you don't care if either of them is. Uh... Certainly we care, but I don't have any specific changes in U.S. policy uh, while that's happened. Jeff? Sarah, what does the United States expect out of negotiations today with China on trade, and what are the President's intentions on helping uh, or changing the policy towards Chinese companies' ZTE? 
Uh, in terms of the meeting, I'll start there. Uh, those are conversations are ongoing. Um, when we have something from that, I'll be happy to share it with you. But right now, uh, those are just discussions and there's nothing to add to that at this point since they're just now taking place. I can say uh, that we expect that the president uh, will meet with um, the head of the Chinese delegation later this afternoon. Sarah. 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 Uh, on, on ZTE, look, the United States and China uh, relationship has a lot of issues that we have regular ongoing conversations about, national security, trade, and ZTE is one of them. As we've said before, and as the President has stated, he's asked Secretary Ross to look into the issue uh, and do whatever is consistent with the law and regulations, but right now it's just something that he's asked them to look into. Julie. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. Um, also on trade, the President said yesterday that Mexico does nothing for us, especially at the border. We know there are uh, talks today on NAFTA, uh, today and tomorrow, um, and I wonder if, if the administration is going to condition any NAFTA deal on a safe third country agreement with Mexico or Mexico stepping up to do more to absorb asylum seekers and other migrants who are seeking entry to the U.S.? I'm not going to get into the trade conversations at this point uh, because they are ongoing and those are negotiations that we're in the middle of, but I can tell you that the President does want uh, to see Mexico step up and do more. Uh, there's a lot that comes through their country and he wants them to be tougher and more aggressive on that front. Jeff? Uh, thank you, sir. This morning, the president uh, uh, marked the one-year anniversary of the Mueller investigation, saying it's disgusting, illegal, unwarranted, and a witch hunt. But his own FBI director yesterday said it's not a witch hunt. Um, does the president, uh, why does the White House still believe it's a witch hunt? And why did he cancel his news conference this afternoon, which was originally set for 3 o'clock with the NATO Secretary Different General. topics. But the president knows that there was no collusion in the campaign, uh, and he has been quite clear about this. It's gone on for over a year. They found no evidence of collusion and still strongly believe that it's a witch hunt. I, I'm not sure um, how we could be any more clear and certainly not sure how the president could be any more clear about his beliefs and his opinion. In terms of uh, a press engagement, the president uh, will have uh, press at the, uh, his event here shortly, which is why we're going to have to keep it quick and short today uh, and likely take a few questions at that event. Jordan. Sarah, on immigration, uh, there seems to be we're moving closer to action in the House of Representatives, and I'm wondering what bill the president would accept, um, anything short of the four pillars that he laid out earlier this month, um, something like border security and DACA. It seems to be a proposal that is gaining steam. Is that something that the president could support? Uh, the president definitely supports uh, border security, as he's laid out uh, multiple times and, again, talked about uh, some yesterday. He would like to see the border secured. He would like to see the loopholes closed. Uh, our priorities have not changed uh, in the immigration conversation no, at sir. all. Sir. Aisha. Thank you. Just going back to North Korea, uh, you have said that uh, the president will be willing to meet with North Korea if North Korea is. So does that put North Korea in the driver's seat here? Is it North Korea that's going to decide whether a meeting takes place? And also, uh, the president said yesterday that uh, the White House hadn't heard anything from North Korea. Has that changed? Have you heard anything since these calls, these talks were called off with South Korea? Uh, they're certainly not in the driver's seat. Nothing could be further from the truth, but they're the ones that extended the invitation. We've accepted it. If they want to meet, we're happy to do that. If they don't, as the president has said, we'll see what happens, but we're going to continue the maximum pressure campaign. In the meantime, um, I, I, I don't know how they would be in the driver's seat in any capacity, form or fashion. Um, well, in this process. Standard for we won't meet with you unless you do X, Y, Z. Look, the North Koreans have already made concessions. They've already uh, three <clears throat> Americans are home now that weren't. Uh, the president has had uh, some success in this process, and certainly we've given up nothing. And we we're going to continue moving forward, and we're moving into this with our eyes wide open. We're not naive in this process, but the president is fully prepared to have the meeting. But if not, um, that's okay too, and we'll see what happens beyond that. Shannon. Um, I know we've asked this a few times, but we're still That's okay. That's kind of what we do here. Ask the same question here. over and over and so, over again. 
Can you say yet when Michael Cohen stopped being the president's personal lawyer? Uh, I'm not going to get into anything on that matter. You'd have to reach out to the president's outside counsel. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Jill, Jill, go ahead. Able to answer Jill, that. go ahead. Thank you, Sarah. Um, why didn't the president disclose the reimbursement to Michael Cohen in last year's financial disclosure report? And just to follow up on other people's questions on North Korea, um, has any consideration been given at this point to potentially canceling those joint military exercises with South Korea? Uh, on the first question that was addressed in the financial disclosure, and that's something that would be determined by White House counsel, uh, how things would be categorized in the fi filings. Sure. So, and so. on uh, the second part, uh, those are ongoing uh, exercises that are routine and they're aware of, they're annual, and at this point we have no intention of changing. Okay. Stephen? I just want to ask you, because so many people in the country have been talking about it in the last 24 hours, what did the president mean when he said that some immigrants are not people, they're animals? Uh, the president was very clearly referring to MS-13 gang members who enter the country illegally and whose deportations are hamstrung by our laws. Uh, this is one of the most vicious and deadly gangs that operates by the motto of rape, control, and kill. If the media and liberals want to defend MS-13, they're more than welcome to. Uh, frankly, I don't think the term that the president used was strong enough. MS-13 has done heinous acts. Uh, it took an animal to stab a man a hundred times and decapitate him and rip his heart out. It took an animal to beat a woman they were sex trafficking with a bat 28 times, indenting part of her body. And it took an animal to kidnap, drug, and rape a 14-year-old Houston girl. Frankly, I think that the term animal doesn't go far enough, and I think that the president should continue to use his platform and everything he can do under the law to stop these types of horrible, horrible, disgusting people. I'm going to take one more question. Peter. Thank you, Sarah. Um, are the chances of a summit now less likely than they were a week ago before these statements uh, came out? Came I'm not going to get into a percentage game. I can tell you that we're ready and prepared. If they happen, they happen. And if they don't, uh, we'll see what happens. Thanks so much, guys. We'll see you here in a few minutes with the president. Sarah, has the president ever lied to us?